Australia, Canada. Two gigantic countries with low populations, incredible living standards and friendly welcoming people. In this video we will be comparing two countries which are actually quite similar but geographically are nowhere near each other. Then once you've watched the video and dropped a like of course, we will then ask you which one you'd rather live in and which one you would rather just visit and why. We will compare their demographics, geography, economies, quality of life and of course we'll throw in some interesting facts along the way. So let's begin by looking at their key demographics, starting off with their populations. So out of the two, Canada is more populated, with around 37.7 million people, making them the 39th most populous nation on earth behind Poland and above Morocco. Fun fact, there are more people living in Greater Tokyo than there are in the entirety of Canada. Think about that. A city in the world has a higher population than the second biggest country on the planet. Wow. Australia is the 55th most populous populated country in the world with roughly 25.5 million people, putting them above Niger and below North Korea. Now that we know their populations, let's look at their population densities. This one is incredibly close and mind-blowing. So with 3.92 people per kilometre squared, Canada is technically more densely populated, making them the 8th lowest densely populated country in the world. Then we have Australia with 3 people per kilometre squared, making them the 5th lowest densely populated country in the world. Again, this next one is unbelievably close, their life expectancy at birth. So Australia just takes the win here at just under 84 years, followed by Canada at just under 83. This means that Australia has the 8th highest life expectancy in the world and Canada is in 16th place. But are you ready for another crazy fact which actually counteracts the previous information? Which country in the world do you think has the highest cancer rates? I'll give you a clue, it's a country with lots of sun and generally quite a pale skin population. It is of course Australia. And then in 11th place, Canada. And finally for demographics, let's look at the average age of the population. Now a younger population is generally a better thing. This means a younger workforce and less of an aging population to hinder the economy and healthcare system. So Australia wins this one with an average age of 38.8 compared to Canada's 42.4. Alright, let's now move on to their geography, starting off with their total land area. This section should be interesting because they are both gigantic. Being the second biggest country on earth only behind behind Russia, Canada has a staggering just under 9.1 million kilometres squared total land area, compared to Australia's 7.7 .7 million which makes them the 6th biggest country in the world. While Australia is an island, it is considered a continent, but it technically is the biggest island on earth. For a visual comparison of these two countries, let's hop over to the true size of .com, where we can see the true size of these countries side by side. It is difficult to represent our three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional map, so this website allows us to see how big each country actually is in relation to each other. So by grabbing both of these countries and putting them on the equator, we can see their actual sizes side by side. So yes, Canada is obviously massive, but its proportions are incorrectly displayed on a traditional map. Let's now take a look at what percentage of these countries' landmass is covered in forests and also how much coastline they have. With 16.2%, 39% of which is in Queensland, of the country being covered in forest, Australia has significantly less than Canada at 34%, so more than a third of Canada's total size is actually forests. Canada actually has the third most forest by area in the world and Australia has the sixth. Okay, so before we reveal this one, out of the two, which one do you think has the most coastline? This country also has the most coastline out of any country on earth. So if you said Australia, you're wrong unfortunately. So with 202,000 kilometers, Canada has by far the most coastline in the world, followed by Australia, which is in seventh place with a measly 25.7k kilometers. Now to my surprise, Norway actually has the second most coastline in the world. All right, so let's move on to the economy and some financial statistics for these two countries. Again, this is another one which is neck and neck. The resemblance for these two countries is uncanny. So let's begin by looking 
looking at their total GDP. The GDP can be calculated by adding up all of the money spent by consumers, businesses and government in a given period. So with 1.3 trillion US dollars, Australia has the 13th biggest economy in the world, which is actually very impressive considering their population is only 25.5 million. This puts them above Spain and below South Korea. Then with 1.65 trillion, Canada is the 10th biggest economy in the world behind Italy and above Russia. However, Canada's economy is actually growing faster at just over 3% and Australia just under 2%. Now that we know their GDP, we can calculate their GDP per capita by dividing their total GDP by their population. Australia actually takes the win here with around 55,000 US dollars per person compared to Canada's 46,200. So the personal wealth of the average Aussie is around $9,000 more than the average Canadian. However, Australia is the 16th most expensive country to live in in the world compared to Canada which is in 24th place. So this probably balances the two nations out. And to end the economy section, let's have a look at some quick fire statistics. Both of these countries have identical education expenditures at 5.3%. Inflation is higher in Australia at 2% compared to Canada's 1.6%. And Canada has the 8th most billionaires in the world with 44, compared to 31 in Australia, which puts them in 12th place. And finally, let's end this section by looking at the Big Mac index. No, seriously, this is a genuine thing. So buying a Big Mac in Canada will burn a bigger hole in your pocket compared to the land down under at $5.29 and $4.98 respectively. And to end the video, let's finish off with some quality of life statistics and facts an area which both of these countries excel in, in my opinion. When I think of Canada and Australia, I think of high wages, good education, and great living standards in general. Of course, they are both not perfect, and they do, of course, have poverty in certain areas. Let's start off by looking at a not so great statistic for these two countries, to which they are neck and neck, their obesity rates. They pretty much have the same percentage of their adult population classed as obese at a roughly 29%. This comes to no surprise as both of these countries indulge in a 21st century Western diet, and Aussies sure do love their meat, beer, and barbecues. Australia has more physicians and hospital beds per 1,000 people, with 3.8 and 3.59 respectively. When it comes to school life expectancy, Australia is ranked as the number one in the world. The school life expectancy, or the SLE, is the total number of years of schooling, this is primary to tertiary, that a child can expect to receive. So with a staggering 23 years, Australia takes the win here. Canada sits in equal seventh place, with many other countries at 17 years, which is still very impressive. Australia just misses out on the top 10 happiest countries in the world in 12th place, which coincidentally sits behind Canada in 11th place. When it comes to the Global Peace Index, Canada ranks as the sixth most peaceful country on earth compared to Australia in 13th place. However, when it comes to corruption, Australia does make the top 10 compared to Canada, who are in 16th place. And finally, the last one, let's compare their military strength ranking. And to no surprise, these two countries are neck and neck again, with Australia having the 19th strongest military in the world compared to Canada, who are in 21st place. So now it's your turn. Let us know in the comments below which one you would live in and which one you would just visit and why. We can't wait to read your comments. Personally, I would live in Australia because I'm a summer baby who loves the ocean and I'd visit Canada for sure. It's another dream destination for me that I hope to visit soon. So thank you so much for watching. And if you love this sort of content, consider dropping a sub. We've got plenty more to come. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.